We've gone over the big winners, but where can you find value with stocks sitting near records? For more on that, let's bring in the dean of valuation himself, Aswath Damodaran, finance professor at NYU's Stern School of Business. Professor, great to have you with us. Welcome back. It's good to be here. Given interest rates are already so low, does a, a Fed cut of 25 basis points, does that factor into your view of how the market is valued? No, I think the Fed obsession is a little strange to me because I think that, I mean, we've gone through waves of this Fed watching for the last decade. And looking back, I think it's, it's more smoke than, than any real effect. Uh, I, I think ultimately this is going to be about growth and earnings. And um, I think next, the, the earnings reports coming out next week um, are going to matter a lot more than what the Fed actually does. In the short term, the Fed might have some effect, but if those earnings don't come in, then I don't think the Fed can do much to keep the market sustained. We are just talking about the big winners in this run from 2K to 3K in the S&P 500, and, and technology, hands down, is a big winner. A couple of names that you bought very recently are in technology, and some would say have very high valuations. Can you walk us through, for instance, uh, Tesla, which you bought four weeks ago at around 180 at this point? I think value ultimately cannot just come from looking at existing earnings. It's got to come from looking at future growth as well. And at the right price, I would buy some of these high growth companies. I mean, my problem with Amazon is not that it's not a great company. I think it's an amazing company. The question whether you can pay the price you pay for Amazon right now and get value from the company. So I think the way to look at the tech companies is not to think in terms of PE ratios or price to book ratios, but to look at what kind of value they can deliver given future growth and to watch for the price at which they can become bargains because I think that even though they might look highly priced, they can still be cheap on a value basis if you can get them at the right price. Hey, Professor, but the key, I think, is to be patient and, and, and have the right timing. Professor, it's Tim Seymour. Uh, as you look around the world for value, um, yep. U.S. In a, in a heavy dominated Fed environment seems to have outperformed everybody. Is there any place that looks interesting? Because if the trend continues, U.S. valuations are going higher. Yeah. European companies look cheap, but they deserve to be cheap. I think much of your, if, if you look at European companies, many of these companies are walking dead companies. They're companies in sectors with very little growth, where there's not much capacity to create value. So I think the U.S. is still where the value is going to come from, even though it might look expensive on a PE basis. I mean, I, I look at Asia, and Asia is actually much more expensive than the U.S. in terms of what you're paying for even earnings and growth. So I would pick uh, you know, U.S. companies over Indian or Chinese companies right now in terms of a purely value basis. I want to ask you about Boeing, Professor, and, and how you value Boeing when so much of its problems <coughs> is something that can't be put in a model, uh, the 737 MAX woes. Yeah. I think that ultimately, though, you've got to face the reality that there are only two companies in this space, Boeing and Airbus, and neither is going any place. So you're going to have the pain of something like the 737 MAX play out with both these companies. So I think if you want to hold Boeing, you've got to accept the fact that in the near term you're going to get some pain, but it might be a company that ultimately will be able to get around that pain and deliver the, the return. So. I know I would not be worried about investing in Boeing long term, but I'd be worried about trading Boeing short term. Are you invested in Boeing right now? Yes. Okay. Professor, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Aswath Damodaran of NYU Stern School of Business. Grasso, do you like any of the professor's picks, which also includes NVIDIA, which he bought uh, at one four years? So I think you have to like NVIDIA. NVIDIA, Internet of Things. And obviously they were, they were hit with that brush of the Bitcoin uh, production cycle. So that has kind of waned off a bit. I think if you want to be there, the connected home, the connected car, the connected office spaces, I think you have to be there. But I do also believe the Fed has a bunch of bullets left. Earnings aren't going to matter for quite some time. And when the Fed's out of bullets, guess what they can do again? QE after they reverse QT. So you'd be silly to actually short this market right now. Maybe it is 3,500. AMD is a name. I, you know, I know we've talked about it for a while, but this is a stock that now has basically doubled since the beginning of this year. It's had a huge run. I mention it because it's up against levels that we last saw in September of 2018. So I think the AMD run can continue on, to be clear, but you also be aware that we could potentially have a pretty major top here. So to take some money off the table in AMD now makes some sense to me, Mel. When you say QE, you're just meaning a, an easing cycle, a, a rate be, easing cycle. No, no, I, I'm, saying that, I'm saying that he, I, like I heard him crisis. today when he was talking to a congresswoman uh -huh. when she said, what happens during the next downturn? 
okay. of the economy. What would you be willing to do when you're out of bullets? And he said we can still use the balance sheet when we're out okay. of bullets. Yeah, it, look, a couple of things that are winding in themes of earlier tonight. So first of all, uh, Bob Pisani just talked about how tech had really outperformed. If you think about the companies that are doing it a little bit, it, it, and Pete referenced AWS as opposed to Amazon being, software over hardware clearly will continue to work in this environment. I, I would argue that, uh, you know, Europe with all these walking dead companies, one of the reasons why Europe has underperformed massively is there are no tech plays in Europe. If you think about it, if you're buying the DAX, right? if you're buying the DAX, you're buying industrial companies, you're buying, you're buying banks, you're buying, you're not buying anything high growth, and that's weighting those industries down um, structurally. It's never going to change.